nothing wrong with your television set. Do not attempt to adjust the picture. We are controlling transmission. If we wish to make it louder, we will bring up the volume. If we wish to make it softer, we will tune it to a whisper. We will control the horizontal. We will control the vertical. We can roll the image, make it flutter. We can change the focus to a soft blur or sharpen it to crystal clarity. For the next hour, sit quietly and we will control all that you see and hear. We repeat, there is nothing wrong with your television set. You are about to participate in a great adventure. You are about to experience the awe and mystery which reaches from the inner mind to the outer limits. Telephone, Commander. Shall I say you're out? Help the others. All right, you sleeping beauties, hit the deck. Every man a tiger. Let's go. You all right, Helen? Sure, Kit. Thanks. In space. We made it. White Sands to Moon Rocket 4, code 63. Come in. As long as no one here but us space people. Not yet. First, I want your initial reports. Remember, this is a scientific expedition and not a stunt. Are we on course, Helen? On course. Are you sure? Quite. You know, lad, I have the strangest feeling as though all this has happened before. White Sands to Moon Rocket 4, code 63. Come in. Rocket 4 to White Sands. Stranger speaking, can you hear me? Can we hear you? Come in. We have passed the 2,000 mile level, are traveling in space. Speed, seven miles a second. Motors smooth, fuel consumption 0.865. Temperature density of atom chamber unchanged. Nitrate pictate acid secure. We will report again at 1400, over and out. Wait a minute, Commander. There's a world full of people listening in. Are you all right? Could we have a few words from the crew? No. Oh, come on, Laird. Don't be stuffy. All right, speak from your stations, but be brief. Rocket 4 to White Sands, stand by. The next voice you hear will be Kip Reisner, co-pilot. All I got to say is watch out for that first step. It's a pip. Helen Salinger, navigator. Hello, Alpha. We're on our way. This is Doug Smith, radio operator. I'm going to bring you a piece of that green cheese for sure. Walt Wallace, engineer. We're humming along, folks. That new lubrication by the Delphite Oil Company sure turned the trick. 
Over to you, White Sands. Members of Atomic Rocket Crew 4, our congratulations on your magnificent achievement. You are embarked on a space journey of over 200,000 miles. At 25,000 miles per hour, you have 10 hours flight ahead of you. To the scientific ingenuity that made this Can flight possible, to? there must now be added your skill, your courage, and our prayers. Weight balance to right. Something's embedded in our rear section. The atomic chamber. Heat radiation going up fast. Must be a meteor. Can we shake it? Maybe centrifugal force will dislodge it. Now then, most certainly. We've dumped it. Nice work, Lurt. If we'd been paying more attention to our work, this might not have happened. Doug? Didn't the meteor appear in the view screen? I don't know, sir. I was listening to the... Exactly. Well, for the rest of this journey, we operate strictly by the book. The planners of this expedition have foreseen all contingencies. We hope. We do more than hope. We work with confidence. Now then, Helen, will you set us on course? Yes, sir. Doug, tune in White Sands. I'm trying, sir, but there's no pip. I'm afraid I'm out of business. Commander, the atom chamber, the nitric acid, one of the containers must have broken. The acid reaches the fuel chamber will explode, won't we? Turn on the water line. That'll neutralize it. Nothing happened, sir. Pour it on. It won't work, sir. It's got to work. What are you doing? I want to check that obstruction on the water line. The acid will burn through that soup in one minute flat. I'll just need 59 seconds. I hope. Every man a tiger. Let's go. Well, I guess I'm not out of business. You must have skin like a rhinoceros. It didn't even blister. We can't all be beautiful. Is Laird sore? After all, I did go over his head. Well, he gave us another lecture on discipline. 
He's right, you know, Kip. We came only this far because we did it by the book. Well, some things aren't in the book. I'm okay. Go and talk to Laird. Hmm? Go on, after all, you're his girl. For the duration of this trip, the only relation I have with Laird is a scientific one. This is no time to pamper with the emotion. <laughs> I bet you got that from him. <laughs> it's true. It's hooey. You can't turn love on and off like a faucet. Believe me, baby, if I ever fell in love with you, I'd chase you across the world around the moon and all the way stations in between. Go on, beat it. All right, Hero. I'll go talk to Laird. But if you don't mind, it'll only be about our landing. <laughs> you two make a great team. Strong mind and strong back. <laughs> I suppose so. Helen, who is Alpha? Alpha? On the radio you said, Alpha, we're on our way. I don't remember saying that. <laughs> Probably just a touch of space madness. You know, there's one school of thought that we'd all go insane. Alpha. Pick your landing spot and start figuring. I already have. We're on course. That's what I call a navigator. It's a valley on the dark side of the moon. The dark side? How could you possibly know anything about the dark side? All men has ever seen is the bright side. Well, the bright side cuts across part of this valley. You can just barely see it on the photographs. Well, why there? We plan to study the bright side and then circle to the dark side. Please, Laird. This is a perfect landing place, believe me. I don't know why I know it, but... I know it for sure. You're the navigator. We'll take a look at it anyway. Please take your stations, please. We're coming in. Tata's off. Stabilizer's on. Ah. Unbuckle now. Nice picking, Helen. I knew it was the right place. Someday I'm going to ask you how. What do we do first, Laird? Want to check the ship, do a repair job if necessary? Well, let's make some findings. We're on the moon, not in a machine shop. I'll go along with Helen on that. We'll make a short exploratory tour, come back, grab some sleep, and then we'll look the ship over. Okay, but I'd feel a lot better if I was sure we were ready to take off at a moment's notice. Why? It's my Navy background. In any engagement, be prepared to disengage. Well, this isn't the Navy. Come on, Doug, help me into my suit. These shoes are heavy! You'll notice it when you get outside. I want everybody to check everybody else's equipment. It must be set number two because of the absolute cold in the dark side. And when you get out there, remember, stay on the dark side. Without any oxygen, what can you possibly want with cigarettes? I feel more at home carrying this. <laughs> About as silly as that gun, Kip. You know there's no life in the moon. I guess I'm like Helen. I feel more at home that way. I wish you'd tell him not to, Laird. Either we're on a scientific expedition, or we're a bunch of Boy Scouts on an outing. I agree with you, Helen, but I guess it won't do any hurt. There's too much infantile romanticism in this crew. Well, I guess I'd better leave this behind, then. I was going to do this outside, but I guess I can wait. What are those? First letters from the moon. I even got my own cancellation stamp. Ought to be worth a couple of hundred bucks a piece. Why don't you make up about 50 of them? Brings the price down, boy. Stamps has got to be rare. Mr. Walters, when you're ready. All set, sir. I'll go first. You wait here.
It works. Come ahead. Think of it, Helen. 200,000 miles away we were. Yet, we knew it would be like this. We'll head that way. Any particular reason? There's a cave in the side of the crater over there. I noticed as we were settling in. Buried treasure, perhaps. Kip, would you mind very much if we did operate by the book for a while? Whatever the commander says. Single file. the dividing line. It may not seem like much to us, but if Helen will fish me out one of those silly cigarettes, I'll show you some. Like Helen said. I wonder if the commander would permit an observation. Ah, oh, come on, Kip. We don't have to get that formal. Well, I only wanted to point out that from the angle the ship entered the crater, it would have been impossible for Miss Salinger to spot that cave. You mean she just guessed it was there? If she could guess a landing spot on the dark side of the moon, I suppose she could guess a cave. What are you driving at? I don't know. But I'll guarantee it isn't in the book. Magnificent. Let's go in. Might as well. Wait a minute. Wouldn't it be wise for someone to stay behind and guard the ship? I don't think anybody will take it. Helen! Helen! Come on, this part! Stay right where you are. I don't want to lose anybody. Exactly as I dreamed it. Or did I? Maybe this is the dream. It's pretty weird. Have you had enough? If you're tired, we can go back. No. We go on this way. Somebody miscalculated on these boots, lad. They're far too heavy. They were all right outside. 
can't understand it. Lair. Look! Moisture! How can there be water without atmosphere? Impossible! This may be something that only looks like water. Scientist doesn't know enough to come in out of the rain. Laird, has it ever occurred to you that maybe this is atmosphere? On the moon? Could be why it's hard for us to walk. Well, this atmosphere has got to be gravitational pull to hold it. Even I know that. We'll go back and get our instruments. That won't be necessary. This will prove it. It's burning. That means oxygen. One at a time. It's there, all right. Wait till I tell him I was the first man to breathe on the moon. Maybe we can bottle this stuff for sale. Moon mist for chronic coughs and asthma. Well, Lad, you'll have to admit that one wasn't in the book. How do you figure it? That makes you very happy, I suppose. No? Huh? Just curious. Magnetic field on the dark side could exhibit a gravitational pull, a special one. <clears throat> of course, we'd have to verify it. And this is a natural decompression chamber, isn't it, sir? We're almost at the end. How do you know we're almost at the end? Well, it stands to reason the air isn't stuffy, so there must be an opening nearby. All right, we'll leave the suits here. Well, I know one thing that goes with me. This. Where there's oxygen, there can be life. And where there's life, there's death. There you go again, Kip. Why is it that the unknown always frightens people? Why can't we expect love and friendship instead of death? I'm all for love and friendship, but I worry. If you don't mind, Laird, I'll take the lead. But I do mind, Kip. In fact, I was about to suggest that you bring up the rear. <laughs> Sorry, I was cross with you. You all right, Helen? Yes. Just let me rest a little. Oh. Lord, you come with me. We're going back and guard those spacesuits. The rest of you follow as soon as Helen can walk. Doug, take this. Any objections, Laird? No, Kip. Go ahead. Missed you. I'm all right now. Should we go on? 
Kip and Wall have gone back to t suits. You can join them if you're able. Back? Why back? I think we've had enough for one day. No. You've been listening to Kip. He's just afraid. I don't think Kip was afraid of anything, Helen. But we don't know what's ahead. Well, I'll tell you then. Adventure, discovery, knowledge. Isn't that why we came? Of course, but another day. Now, if you don't want to come with me, I'll go on alone. You listen to me. I'm still commander of this expedition. You're not my commander. I know where I want to go, and I'm going there. Helen, what's cutting into you? Take your hands off me. Granger, they're gone. The spacesuits? You must have missed them. They're gone, all right, Commander. We went back to the place we left them. There were marks in the sands that they've been dragged away, just to make sure we checked back as far as we could. Don near ran out of air. But without suits, we're trapped. Unless we find the joker that took them. Now they have that gun now. That settles the argument Laird and I were having. If we can't go back, the obvious thing to do is go forward. You seem very proud of yourself, Helen. I am. There it is. You said that as if you knew it all the time. It ain't true. There can't be another world in the bowels of the moon. That's exactly what it is. Hasn't been a fire lit in this place in many years, perhaps centuries. Probably an extinct civilization. It took some form of intelligence to steal those spacesuits. Of course it did. And a very high form to build a place like this. You seem to know all about it. What do they look like? Hey, come here. Look, it's all ready for lighting. Bring your cigarettes and matches. I told you I didn't feel at home without them. Oh, that's better. I was getting a mighty lonely feeling. Helen. Helen, I asked you a question. What? You seem to know this place was here. What else do you know? Nothing. Certainly I've never been here before. I must have dreamed. Did you dream who stole our spacesuits? Of course not. Grant you, Kip, this is something we didn't foresee. But let's not lose our senses completely. Somebody stole our suits. And that somebody must still be around here. Hey! You out there! Hey! You out there! That guy sounds lost. Come on, Doug. Let's look around. Something jumped me. What sort of thing? I couldn't tell. It jumped on my back and tried to get at my throat. Where's Helen? I don't know. But I caught a glimpse of her during the fight, and she was just standing there watching. Helen! A fire! Helen! Spread out quickly. Professor? I 
don't know what to believe anymore, Kip. Well, you can believe this. They were definitely after this gun. From here on, we stick together so they can't pick us off one by one. I've got a hunch Helen will be back. We'll wait. We'll, we'll give her one hour. I'm still in command here, Kip. That's right, Laird. If you order us to separate and go hunting for Helen, we will. No. We'll wait. I am here, Alpha. It has been a long journey, Helen. Welcome to the moon. This is my second in command, Beta. And this is Lambda. The others you will meet in time. But there's still so much I... I don't understand. You are now one of us. Ask anything. Well, I... I still can't be sure whether you're speaking my language or I yours. We need no language, Helen. We can project our thoughts long distances, as you well know. Someday we will teach you. In the meantime, we will speak your tongue, just as we speak all of us tongues. Remember that our generation predates yours by centuries. Yes. What you taught me about celestial navigation made me look like quite a genius. But why me, Alpha, and not the others? We have no use for men. What Beta means is that we have no contact or control over them, as we do among ourselves. It seemed rather difficult to get a crew entirely composed of women. We decided to concentrate on you. With your wisdom, how is it you never came to us on Earth? Our ancestors made one fatal error, Helen. When they discovered that the atmosphere around us was beginning to disappear, they decided to conserve oxygen. Do you know what that meant? Maximum energy reduction. Planned genocide to reduce population. Then, when we discovered we were only postponing the inevitable, it was too late. Our only hope was that a spaceship would come to us. And now that we're here, you will take back only three of us. We three. Only women? We have no men. But my knowledge is limited to navigation. Can you, can you run the ship without them? They will teach us how. But you said you had no control over them. Show us their weak points. We'll take care of the rest. It's strange. I should care what happens to them. And yet I don't. No. You see, we don't care. All right, Kip. It's one hour. You were wrong. Wait a minute. I hear something. Where have you been? I've been trying to convince them we're their friends. You know, Kip, it was your gun that frightened them. I promised them you'd put it away. An unpromise. This gun stays out until they produce the space suits. Try to convince them of that. Have no fears, Lieutenant Reisler. Your suits are safe and will be returned to you at the end of your visit. Helen, they speak English. Theirs is an ancient culture, Laird. Their communication system is far in advance to ours. You want to be friends? Then bring the spacesuits here and now. Oh, don't be a bore. It's all right, my dear. I understand. Your suits will be returned to you in the morning, Lieutenant. Good. That's when I'll start being friendly. Pay no attention to him. He's only the co-pilot. Commander Granger here is our chief pilot and head of our expedition. This is Doug Smith, radio operator, and Walt Walters is our engineer. I don't know all of their names yet, but... This is Alpha, Lambda, and Beta. And most important of all, here is food. Alpha? Oh, yes. They seem to have mastered the art of mental telepathy. I don't understand it yet myself, but she was sending me messages all the way. 
Should we take a chance? Why not? Delicious. It tastes a little like honeydew melon. May we serve you, Earthmen? Well, thanks, Amanda. Come, sit down. Delighted. Come on, Kip, it's great. I brought my dinner with me. Rations? He must be nuts. Yes, sir. This is a nice layout. I wonder what the folks back home would think if they knew I was having dinner with a beautiful moon. Do you have a special Earth girl? No, nobody special. How about you? Incidentally, where are your men folk? You're the first man I've ever seen. Ours died off when I was still a child. Gee, it's a lucky thing we came along. Well, I mean, so you'd know what a man looks like. I mean, I'm sorry about your menfolk, ma'am. I, I didn't mean it any other way. I understand, Doug. But after the navigator has set the course, how do you adjust this automatic pilot? Well, that's pretty complicated, and besides, it's restricted information. I mean, uh, let's talk about your people. I want to know how that girl Lambert disappeared from right under our noses, and how you were able to contact Helen before we even hit the moon. That, Commander, is a good deal more complicated than your automatic pilot. But if you will explain the one, I will at least try to indicate how we have achieved complete control over our bodies and minds. <laughs> Perhaps some other day. <laughs> I'm sure you understand, but I'm under orders. Say, you wouldn't have any small works of art that I could take home with me as a souvenir, would you? You may have this. Thanks. I was admiring it. What's it made of? You have no metal on earth to compare. We call these things slave bracelets. They're made out of gold sometimes. Gold? Why? For the carriage trade. Plenty expensive. Gold. But it's so common. Gold common? We don't even bother to dig it. You mean it just hangs around loose? There's a place near here where there's more gold than you could carry away in your rocket ship in a hundred years. Uh-uh. Skipper wouldn't buy it. Just wouldn't go for it. Besides, we'd need those spacesuits to get out of that tunnel. I know where the spacesuits are. A whole cave full of real gold. Or on Saturday nights, you can go out on the town. Dance, drink, just laugh a little too hard. I'd like the driving down to the beach best. Stretching out on the sand. Just a boy and a girl together. And, and maybe what you call a, a Coke. To the everlasting friendship of our peoples. Amen. And now I know you must be tired. We will return tomorrow. And with your spacesuits, my foolish friend. I can be had. Well, I hope you had yourselves a time. If we didn't blunder ahead and start a war between the worlds, it's no thanks to you. No thanks asked. Question is, who's going to stand the first two hour watch tonight? Helen? What for? Walt is... Where is Walt? Last I saw, he was wandering off with Beta. <laughs> Fast worker, that guy. That's not funny. Walt! 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 Walt Walters! Didn't we agree to stick together? I don't think he's in danger, Kip. What do you think, Miss Sollinger? I think you're spoiling for a fight. You're so right. Would you like to step into my private office? Any time. Kip! Don't worry. I won't slug her. Doug, stand guard. Okay, Kip. This way, Miss Sollinger.
Now then, which side are you on? I didn't know we had sides. I'm convinced you deliberately let us into this. I'd be very happy if you'd unconvinced me. I don't know what you mean. Look, Helen, I have a very high regard for you. You're smart, you have courage, and you're all woman. And if it hadn't been for Laird, I'd have tried to make it you and me a long time ago. Flattery will get you no place. Helen! Take your big hands off me! Not until you're level with me. <sighs> oh, come on now. I'm not hurting you that much. Don't let go, Kip. Helen, what's the matter? Danger, Kip. They want to kill you. They'll take the spaceship and they'll make me go with them. Yeah. Well, how? They can, Kip. They control me. Control you? Even with Laird, I liked you best. But Laird knew more and they wanted me with him. They don't control you now, do they? No. But hang on. Hold on tight. You're doggone right, I will. You're doggone right. <laughs> Well, you were right, Laird. My apologies. She's a fine girl. Of course she is. You know, there's a lot of things I don't understand yet. But you can be sure that there's a perfectly valid and, and scientific reason for all of them. That's right, Laird. These people may be far ahead of us in many things. Not as far as they think. What do you mean? Nothing. We'll talk about it in the morning. Let's get some sleep. And I don't think we need to stand guard. By the way, if Walt comes back, eat him out on general principles, will you? You're the expert at that. You got my full permission. <laughs> in other words, this controls this in a ratio of six to one. The speed control retarder, the stabilizer, and the cutoff. You're too smart for me, baby. I like I'm stupid. Why don't you stay on the moon? And let me do your job. Well, uh, if that goal is piled as high as you say it is, one more trip and you can have my job. It's there for the looking. Come on, let's go. Sorry to disturb you, but I feel like a chaperone to fraternity dance. What's the matter? Doug's just gone off with a little Lambda. Lambda? Well, that's bad, Kip. She's the dangerous one. Dangerous? That kid? Yes. You'd better go after them. There may have been a change in plans. Okay. 
Them moved, I don't imagine they went very far. anything I said or did. No. No, please save yourself. From what? From me. Because I love you, Doug. Yet I must kill you. I love you too, Landa. And I'm not afraid. Oh, listen to me. The survival of my people is at stake. In another few years, this underground world will be as dead as the bright side of the moon. I will come back, Landa. I promise. The ship is only the first of many. Oh, but don't you see? We must be sure. Two million years of civilization. Does one gamble that on, on a promise? And uh, I will come back. Kip, old man, I'm afraid I'm going to have to intercede for Walton Duck. You know, <laughs> there must be something to this moon and romance stuff. All right. Now, Helen, you say something. It's obvious, isn't it? All that poppycock I told you out on the terrace was just to get you to go away. Now, go away, will you? That's what I'd like to do. But I'm sure not getting any help. She's in tune with Helen. Granger is explaining the automatic pilot. I must talk to Alpha. Helen can tell her later. Is it important? Yes. I think we should take one of the men back with us. Why? Because if we show good faith, they might send more ships. Four of us will be enough. We will get their women under our power, and soon we will rule the whole world. But I don't want to rule the world. I want to live on it just like the Earth people do. Lambda, we are coming into a new situation. We must bring our culture to Earth. No. She's fallen in love with the radio operator. Is that true? And what if it is? There is no room in your life for love. We will choose your man eugenically. You and Beta will have girl children fit to carry on. The best of the Earth mongrels will be none too good. I won't do it. I love Doug, and you must take him. Threats, my dear? Yes. It just so happens you can't leave without us, and I won't tell you why. Lambda, you will tell me why. You think you can force me? My will is just as strong as yours. Kip. Well, I didn't expect to see you again. I think we'd better plan on getting out of here. No. When did you arrive at that momentous decision? Some of these moon people are planning to steal our ship. No. But one of them is on our side. I suppose you mean Helen. Well, Helen's liable to be a bit of a problem, too. She's been marked. She's under the influence of these people. Kid, you interest me strangely. What gossip column have you been reading? Lambda told me. I guess we sort of fell in love. Blessings on you. She say when the cat women intend to try the little game? As soon as they get all the information they need about the ship. Some of them are supposed to work on Walt and someone else on Laird. What? Huh? On Laird? Laird. Well, 
Where have you been? Never mind that. We're just curious to know what you two lovebirds have been talking about. Don't tell it. Why not? I'm afraid you'd be very much disappointed if you're just talking shop. Anything wrong with that? No, not a thing. Except the cat women are out to steal our ship and Helen's tied body and soul. That's a lie! Present their kept. What's your evidence? Well, for one thing, Doug got the dope from little Lambda. Oh. For another, Helen told me herself. We were out in the terrace. No. And she told me to hold her tight. Not to kiss her, but just to hold her hand. Let go of my hand! Not this time, baby. Oh, thank you, kid. Thank you. Now, let's set the record straight. Are you in love with Laird? No. Have you been bleeding him for information to pass on to Alpha? Yes. And who do you really love? You. You take it. Don't let it go! Blair! Stop it! Stop! You want to put her back under Alpha's spell? <laughs> Helen! Where is she? Helen! On their way, I couldn't stop them. Who? Helen, Alpha, and Beta. Just the three of them. They're going to steal the rocket ship. Why did they take two more of your people? They didn't want to for one thing. They couldn't for another. I hit out two of the spacesuits. We're still in business, provided we can stop them before they reach the ship. Who goes with me? Doug. Let's go. How much head start do you think they have? Too much. Unless something holds them up. against us. How could I? It was a moment of weakness. Wait for me here and I'll get another suit and join you. It's a trap. Come on. I won't let you go. Helen, look at me. My will is as strong as theirs. They'll kill you as they've killed Walt. Stay here. You will come with us. Don't listen. Stand firm. <laughs> Done is done. Is your radio okay? It's okay, sir. We'll contact White Sands. Tell them we're coming in. Moon Rock at four, calling White Sands. Moon Rock at four, calling White Sands. Come in. Do you hear me, White Sands? Don't blow a gasket, White Sands. We're coming in. Leaving Moon at 0117 your time. But what happened? That is a long story. Over to you and out. We now return control of your television set to you. Until next week at this same time when the control voice will take you to the outer limits.